Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Pop OS 22.04 has just landed. And what's special about this release is it's 22.04 and we're going to talk about it. And so without further ado, let's quickly dive right in. Okay, so after installation, welcome to Pop OS is what you get greeted with. So you have three options over here. You can either have no dock. You can choose for your dock to extend to the edges or dock doesn't extend to the edges. This is the option that I prefer, so we're going to stick with it. Next is configuring the top bar. Show workspaces button, so you can enable or disable that. Show applications button, enable, disable that. I prefer to keep it disabled because you have your applications button over here. And also you can change the position of your date and time. Now open and switch applications from launcher. Press the super key or use an icon in the dock to display the launcher search field. So basically if I hit the super key, this is what I get. And you can type a lot of things. So for example, if I type settings, I'm going to get settings. You don't have to touch your mouse and it's pretty handy. Next is using gestures for easier navigation, of course, but I'm running in this, running this in a VM. So I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see it right now. And you also have light theme and dark theme. Pop OS IMO looks better in dark theme, but we're still going to change it and we're going to see how it looks. So it looks pretty good. Let's open settings of this one. And yeah, it looks fine. Uh, you have a dark uh, top bar and then uh, these are white. So that's that's pretty good. And another change which the Pop OS team made is now you get separate wallpapers for light and dark version. Location services, I'm not going to bother with it right now. And time zone, yeah, let's say India because I am in India. So next, uh, connect your online accounts. Pretty standard stuff. Skip and start using Pop OS. All right, so if you are new to Pop OS, well, welcome to Pop OS. If you're new to Linux, welcome to Linux. On the left, you have workspaces. In the center, date and time. And on the right, you have a control panel. So this is for volume. This is for your internet settings lock power off buttons basically and uh if this would not have been a vm you would also have seen options for changing your power settings so you could have set this computer to performance mode power saver mode or a balanced mode i guess and there is another button so this is called a tiling button pop os uh, kind of uses tiling it, it fixes up the gnome tiling so let's say i have settings open and i have files open at the same time and uh, you can either snap these two windows uh, like this or if you want your windows to automatically snap when you uh, when you're working with multiple windows you can just enable the tile button and you can click tile windows and it basically does it for you so if i open another app let's say terminal it'll actually open the app without disturbing the layout of the other programs. Obviously, it'll have to make space for this, but you get the idea. Now you can also change other factors like uh, you can make exceptions to the floating windows. You can change or you can rather read what shortcuts are here and you can have a hint to show which window is active. So as you can see, uh, if I if I click that button, it'll show me a orange border around it so I know which one is active right now. I usually prefer to turn it off and you can also increase or decrease your gaps between. I like to keep it at one, but you can do what you prefer to do. And we're going to talk about settings. So let's go to about as is custom. And as you can see, Pop OS, beautiful logo, 22.04 LTS. We are using X11 though, because this is the default compositor and Pop OS is known to provide NVIDIA driver support. You have a separate ISO for that on their download page. And also sticking with X11 is a bit more safer, even though it's older, but you are guaranteed to have no apps that will break functionality when you're actually trying to use them. That's not to say that Wayland is bad. Wayland has improved quite a lot and Gnome Wayland is actually well, it's very good, if not perfect right now. And another big highlight is we are now using GNOME 42. Cosmic Desktop, the uh, the desktop environment that the, the vision for the Pop! OS team is to actually have an entirely different yet kind of similar type of experience, which is kind of related to GNOME 3 actually. And so 
this may be GNOME 42, but it's actually heavily stripped down and heavily customized. Now they soon will move on to another DE, which they will create by themselves in-house based on Rust, but that's still quite a few ways out. Uh, so this is what we're stuck with right now. And honestly, it's, it's pretty good. Now one might argue that after GNOME 42, it looks a little bland and well, I can't completely disagree, but it's functional. If you love Pop! OS, you're not going to hate this. Let's check out some of the backgrounds that we have. So this is your desktop. As you can see, if you, if you are familiar with uh, standard GNOME, you can see that this is kind of different. You have background, appearance, dock, workspaces. Uh, backgrounds, they're mostly all the same. Uh, I guess I don't see anything new. I guess this is new. I'm not sure, but yeah, this looks good. And I think we're going to stick with it for the rest of the video. Under appearance, we already saw light and dark mode. Dock, so you can customize your dock. You can show your launcher, workspace applications, mounted drives. I don't like this, so yeah. We can also launch or cycle windows or launch minimize or preview windows is what I keep it at. You can also change your icon size, uh, dock visibility for it to IntelliHide or be always visible. And you can also customize the position of the dock on your desktop. This is the new app drawer. It was introduced in 21.10, I believe. Uh, this is functional, nothing flashy. You can create a folder and you can customize how your apps uh, would go. This is your home and that's it. And as for the kernel number that Pop! OS is going with this time, it's actually 5.16 kernel. Now, generally what Pop! OS does, even though it's based on Ubuntu, the kernel gets updated way quicker. So right now it's on 5.16, whereas Ubuntu 22.04 is on 5.15 kernel. So, uh, and I think Pop! OS will continue with giving uh, more up-to-date kernels down the line because Pop! OS is known to be a gaming-focused distro. Take what you will from that. And it, it, it always provides the latest kernel to help with uh, game. It also provides Mesa 22 drivers. So if you are on AMD or you're using Intel graphics cards, uh, that will be more beneficial to you uh, because a higher version, better. All right, so remember how we talked about GNOME 42 being the default GNOME, even though it's been stripped down? So you're going to get some of the benefits of GNOME 42. So let's say if I type screenshots, there is a new screenshot utility. And I guess you can search it by typing in here. You can definitely do this in your in GNOME, in vanilla GNOME. But uh, let's try taking a screenshot. So if I press print screen, it should take me to the new overlay so right now you can take a you can take a screenshot of a particular selection of your entire screen or of the window that's open right now or what you can do is you can uh, take a video so in video mode you don't have a window option unfortunately you only get selection and screen so this is a new feature that was included in gnome 42 it's very handy uh, i gotta say well, it definitely uh, won't replace your OBS, but for other purposes, this, this should be good enough. All right, so now we're moving on. Now we're going to talk about some of the things that are new in Pop! OS. So first is automatic updates. If I go down to OS upgrade and recovery, well, it's taking a lot of time. Okay, so after it checked for any OS upgrades, it says you are running the most current Pop! OS version. Now, you can also enable automatic updates this time around. And you can choose to have them automatically installed. As you can see, by default, it's turned off. Or what you can do is you can choose a time. So you can also say update when available, or you can schedule automatic updates. As you can see, weekdays, or you can take any day, and you can take your time am pm it's totally up to you and if you say update when available as you can see this is being grayed out for obvious reasons and you can also have show update notifications so it'll be uh so if you if this is off if automatic updates is off this will be turned on so you can have them show weekly daily or monthly so this is a good way to actually not disturb the user who is using the distribution and it's and i think it's a very very cool thing to do because you need focus sometimes, man. That's just how things roll. Okay, now we're going to check something else. We're going to check the support tab. I believe this is also new. 
and you have a lot of new things. So inside support, what you can do is you can uh, browse the documentation or you can join the community support in Pop! OS chat as well. You can also create log files for your support. And if you are a paid customer of System76, you can also get professional support where System76 hardware users can submit a support ticket to the System76 happiness technicians. And obviously this won't be visible over here because that is only available in systems. I mean, which you buy from the company system 76. Now, apart from that, you also have enhanced performance with the system 76 scheduler. So it optimizes performance by directing resources to the window in focus. So if you're doing something like intense gaming in full screen, you'll get a much smoother experience. Apart from that, pop shop has received a lot of love this time around. So. This is actually the app center used by elementary OS and people complain a lot. If you're active on Reddit, you would see that people complain that app center takes up a lot of memory, takes up a lot of CPU cycles. So what they went ahead is they did some major renovations to the pop shop. They have much more backend code improvements for more responsive operations. They improved the reliability for package operations, update, install, etc., etc and they did many more UI improvements too, so that when you're in tiling mode and you have a lot of windows open, uh, this would actually render properly even, even if it is taking up a very, very, very small space of your entire screen. And now update and install buttons also now function as a progress bar. I believe we saw this with uh, elementary OS when it came out. Um, and so basically if I install Atom, the progress bar would be uh, shown here. As you can see, Flathub remote is also enabled, Flatpaks is enabled. So that's a very good thing. And another thing is that now Pop! OS has switched over to Pipewire for audio processing. Now, does this mean that your old applications that used Pulse Audio will not work? Well, obviously no, because I want to show you one thing. If you're new to Linux and if you're worrying that uh, your apps with Pulse Audio wouldn't work, so allow me to show you uh, this Ubuntu that I am currently running is using Pipewire. But if you if I open OBS and uh, if you see, I am using Pulse Audio for audio capture. So what happens is applications that use Pulse Audio, they will work perfectly because they're getting routed through Pipewire. So the benefit is that you get the best of both worlds. But before I wrap it up, there are a few things to say. Uh, you have better multi-monitor support now, including fixed layout on high DPI displays, improved performance, installed NVIDIA drivers are now visible in PopShop and they no longer have an installed button beside them because for obvious reasons. And you also have better performance with improvements to CPU scaling governor, which keeps your CPU running at an optimal frequency for your system. The upgrades are now resumable. So the Debian packages, if they get interrupted when you're upgrading your system, you can pick up right from where you left off. And you also have a funky new user icon. So if I go to users, I should be able to see it. Oh yeah, this is the funky looking new icon. Uh, it's cool. Anyways, guys, so with that, we come to the end of this video. If you loved it, leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel if you found this content useful. And that's it, basically. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time. Peace.